Marsh. Hey everybody, Rebecca here. We're about to start a one hour vinyasa flow yoga class and I'm happy to be with you. I brought my harmonium just because it's so familiar and it sounds so pretty and you guys can own to it at home. And I'm here at One Yoga and I miss you guys and uh, we'll be back together soon. Okay, close your eyes. Just allow your breath to come in and out through your nose. Just a little smile to chase the bad juju away. Samvritti, even turning breath, even in, even out. Everything is soft. Sits bones are planted on the earth. Spine is tall, shoulders relaxed. We find our breath. I'm gonna to start to play and I'll prompt you when to sing. We'll join together with three ohms. You can keep your eyes closed. right hand and put it on your heart. Feel your beating heart and acknowledge your humanity. I believe we are spiritual beings having a human experience and that our creator manifested itself through us to see and feel and touch and have a human experience through us, but we're human nonetheless. Every day, acknowledge the way that you show up and the way that you try, doing your very best, one day at a time. I like to think of my left hand as my soul and this is the essence of who I am. My soul that existed before it found its way into my physical body and the essence of me that will continue after my physical body dies. And I put my soul on top of my humanity and I just cloak myself in it because we're both of these things. And sometimes if we listen, our soul can give us some very good information. So 
ask your soul, what do I need to help me through my life right now? What quality can I cultivate to help me, to give me a better quality of life, to maybe make things a little easier? Maybe it's grace, maybe it's courage, maybe it's presence, maybe it's gratitude. I wait, I wait for the answer to come from a place that's not of me, but comes through me. And then I create an intention from that place. I bring my hands together and I say, God, help me to cultivate more joy and fun. And let myself know that I'm right on track. And then we send a message out with a deep breath in. And we open our palms and go, So it is. Then we bring our palms back together and bow our chin to our fingertips, bowing our intuition, our intellect to our intuition. Let's say a blessing for all of those sick and suffering right now. All of those at risk. All of those afraid all of those feeling alone and all of those giving so selflessly of themselves to help others. There's a lot of prayers to be had right now and there's never too many. So won't you add yours with me? Let's send our blessing with a deep breath in. Open your hand, send it. And so it is. Good, bring your hands down to your knees and while I put my harmonium away, you can let your eyes flutter open. And feel your sits bones rooted in the earth. And switch the shin to the opposite shin in front now. And start to make little Sufi circles with your torso and your pelvic bowl. Forward and back. Inhaling forward, nice and easy, and exhaling back as you round the spine. And just start to get in touch with your breath and your body. Whatever little kinks you have, you can move them out. You're going to soften everything that's not working so the eyes and the face will be soft, the mouth, the lips, the gums, the jaw, everything soft as you just start to articulate your spine in a circle. And when you get to the back, you're going to reverse the circle. I don't want you walking in circles when you leave this place or your home. So we do everything in a balanced way. We get one side, we get the other. And just breathe and move. And find some joy in your body and what it can do. And if there's tension or if there's any kind of uh, limitation, we bring our attention there and we honor our body in every way. Because as we know, the first tenet of the eight limb path is ahimsa, which is do no harm. Do no harm. Above all else, do no harm. Then we come back to the middle and we walk our fingers out, relax our shoulders down and take our palms up to the sky. Good, press your palms away, reach up. And then go ahead and make a basket with your hands. Drop your head back. 
Big deep breath in. Stick out your tongue, open your eyes and go. The lion's breath. <laughs> Exhale, chin down. One more inhale, let it out. And chin down. Good, neutralize your neck, bring your hands down. Let's come to all fours. So here we are with our shoulders right over our wrists. We breathe in and we exhale, push the floor away into a mad cat and we tuck. And we tuck the chin to the sternum, creating Dhanandara Bandha or the throat lock, which compresses the blood. And then we inhale and we open it, which reverses the posture in the throat, in the spine, and releases the flow of blood. Exhale, we start to find some suppleness in the spine. Lots of things happening all at once. We exhale round. And we inhale lift. And we do a few more of these. And then we find child's pose. We bring our knees wide and our toes to touch and we sit back on our heels. We walk our fingers forward and rest our forehead down. And you breathe here and you find some expansion in the shoulder girdle. And you just rest. So this is called Balasana. You're going to stay here. If I come up to talk to you for a moment, you can hold the place in Balasana with your forehead down. I just want you to be aware of this shape because if you're tired during any part of this practice, this is where you'll come. You'll come to Balasana and you'll just rest. And if that's not comfortable, you'll just lie on your back and take a comfortable supine position until you're ready to join us again. Okay? And that holds true for any class uh, at any time if you need a break. Okay, so we go from here and then we're going to come on up and we're going to drop into modified lion. So we're going to drop in and this is amazing for the psoas and we're going to press into the earth and we're going to make sure we have lots of space from our ears to our shoulders. So we're not dropping in like this, we're pushing away, we're shining our heart to our shoulder blades. I'm sorry, our heart to our shoulders and the shoulders drop down on the back. Yeah, you press into the meaty part of your palms and you look up. And then on the exhale, you come to a mad cat and back to child's. And then maybe you lift the fingertips up to get a little wrist stretch. And then you come back through all fours and then you're gonna round up into mad cat, drop into mod modified lion and look up. And again, you can go, you can tell I like and then you come back and you round up and you drop down in the modify into child's pose and you flow between the two. And then we come back to child's pose. Mm -hmm. Good, walk your fingers over to the right, take your left hand on top of the right and ground your left hip. Feel a nice side body stretch. And we send the breath into the left side. Into the intercostals, into the top of the back. And then we walk our hands through the middle and over to the left. So maybe your hands come off the mat, maybe they don't. You just be where you are. And breathe into the right side body. And then we come back. And now we're going to take our first downward facing dog. So walk your fingers about two inches forward. Tuck your toes, lift your hips, downward facing dog. And from here, you're just gonna walk out your dog, which means pedaling out the feet, left and right. You come up on one toe, 
drop the opposite heel down towards the mat. Maybe it reaches, maybe it doesn't, it doesn't matter. And you just play, pressing forward and down and shifting. This is called walking the dog. This is wonderful for your hamstrings. And you press forward and down and you're, from your hips to your hands is one line. And from your hips to your heels is another, okay? And you wanna take that tilt out of, your, uh, out of your back by drawing the tailbone down. And then you wanna find a little length from your shoulder to shoulder, from ear to ear, so that you're not hugging the ears in, hugging the shoulders up and shrugging. Okay, so we're gonna separate there from, shoulder, from ear to ear, from ear to shoulder. And then come forward to the top of a push-up and check your alignment and come back. And we're gonna do that two more times. Come forward, nice strong core here, right? So no saggy booties. Lift it up and engage that core. Press through the meaty part of your palm so you're not dumping into your wrist and come back to downward facing dog. Yep, and then one more. And then roll forward on your toes and back. Forward on your toes and back. Forward on your toes and back. What happens is you come into your fingers and you want to use your fingers. Yeah. Take your knees down. Untuck your toes. Lift your tail high. Wrap the elbows in. Take your nipples to your thumbs. Nipples to thumbs. And then come down to eight point salute. Ah, eight point salute. So this is a great pose because it's a back bend. It opens up your throat. You can tuck your toes here, actually. It opens up your throat. It gives you a great back bend. And you can intensify it by pressing forward with your hands isometrically. And breathe into your throat. It's also called awkward throat because it's an awkward pose because it's very awkward. <laughs> and you breathe in and exhale lower down. Ah. And then take your hands back, palms are down. We're just gonna start to flow. We've done a little bit of back bending already. And you're gonna walk your hands back, 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 back until they lift and come down again. Walk them back, 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 and lift and come down. Lift, walk back, 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 and lift. And this time bring your feet up maybe and bring your fingers reach back towards your toes and the toes reach towards the wall. Lift, good, exhale. Take your right cheek down, take the palms of your hands down, shift your sacrum, shift your hips side to side, rotate your wrists, find a little movement here and then find some stillness and breathe and rest. these moments in between the stress to conserve your energy. Good. Now we're going to bring back our hands under our shoulders. You're going to tuck your toes. And for the first one, let's come through all fours and then back down rock. Okay. So one more time, just transition to plank because you should be able to go from plank to down dog without moving your hands. So this is your alignment. And then take your right leg up. Now you don't have to go crazy high, but you should be lifting from the inner right thigh. Hips are square to the earth, pressing forward and down. And then exhale, draw the knee under the body. Press into the earth, lift, and drop the right foot to the right thumb. Let's come down on our back knee. And let's just rest here. So if you have blocks, you can just breathe right into the stretch. And I'll let you walk your toes forward so that you get as much stretch as you can. And then what you're going to do is just let go because this takes time to release this head hip flexor. And you can't rush it along. You need to give it the time, you need to give it the breath, you need to give it the postures that open it. So just give yourself a couple breaths right here. Good. 
you're gonna move the blocks if you've got them. Bring your hands down, tuck your toe under, and find plank pose. Now here we're gonna take our reverse vinyasa. So let's get clear about what a vinyasa is. I'm gonna move my blocks so you can see my hands. You're gonna shift your weight forward, and I wanna take my elbows pretty much over my wrists when I come down. Then I wanna lift up, and then I'm gonna roll over my toes to downward facing dog. Okay, take your left leg up. Same thing, dial the left hip down, press forward and down, lift through the left inner thigh. Crown of the head reaches towards the mat. Breathe in, exhale, draw the knee under the body, draw it in, right, right into your sternum and then step to your left thumb and place the right knee down. Again, if you've got blocks, bring them in or whatever props you have and then sink into the lunge. And ultimately we want the left knee to be over the left ankle, okay? That protects the knee. Whenever we step bone on bone, it protects the joints and it protects the, yeah. So knee on top of ankle and breathe. So we stop in here. And this is when the peanut gallery can come in and start chattering. And you know what we say? Shh. We're practicing yoga. I'll pick you up later if I choose, but for now, shh. kind but firm, like you would a child, okay? Because our inner uh, peanut gallery can sometimes be unruly. We just put it in its place and say, later, maybe. All right, I'm gonna move the blocks. We're gonna take another vinyasa, because I wanna do that again. So tuck the back toe under, take the left foot back, take the weight over, come on down, only about here. Don't, don't dip too low, untuck the toes, lift up under your down dog. Now, if you want to make this more challenging, you can come back in through a plank, through a push-up, and down dog. I'm going to take the whole breath here. And when you're in down dog, I want you to think about softening and separating the sits bones. Now, to get between our hands, we can soften our knees and step forward, okay, like this, and fold. Or you can put a nice soft bend in your knees, look between your hands, and then jump between your hands, like that. If it takes you a few steps to get there, that's all right. Then we're gonna come to a flat back. So notice the flat, back on me. Notice the long neck. So we're not looking up and we're not tucking, tucking here. That's for Uttanasana. This is called Ardha, which means half. Uttanasana, fold, half fold. Now we're going to forward fold for Uttanasana. Now we do tuck the chin. Then we soften the knees and we reach wide. So go slow because our head's been down for a while and your head is going to be the last thing to come up. And then you're gonna reach wide. And you're gonna touch your hands over your head and take your gaze to the sky. And we're gonna exhale our hands to our hearts. This is called Anjali Mudra. Mudra means hands or hand shape. And we just find our breath nice and soft through the nose. Good, and take your hands down. So if you have water, you can go ahead and get a sip of water, and then I'll meet you at the front of your mat, okay? In Tadasana, there are a few ways to do it. For me, I like to bring my big toes together, my ankles are separated about an inch or so, maybe two, and then I take my palms open, the thighs come back, the core is engaged, the spine is tall, 
Lots of space from your ears to your shoulders again, so no shrugging. And that theme will continue with the length from here to here, okay? Because yoga is about being long and extending the muscles long and stretching them out, not compressing them. And if we do compress them, then we always let them relax and expand as a counter pose. So find your drishti. Your drishti is your gaze. So I'm gonna be looking at you a little bit, but if you can, I want you to find something straight in front of your mat, in your eye line, and find a spot on the wall and have that be your drishti, which is your gaze, your focal point. Then we're gonna be in our flow with a deep breath in, rise up, gaze up. These are the cues. Exhale, hinge and fold, swan dive all the way over. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, deep bend in the knees, and you're gonna to come to your plank pose and take your vinyasa. You can come back to a push-up or just go straight to downward facing dog. You're going to take your right leg up and exhale a careful step forward. You're going to plant the left foot left of center line and the right foot is right of center line. So you're on, you're on railroad tracks, not a tight rope. And you're going to bring your hands to your hips. And if you bring your hands to your hips, if there were headlights on your shoulders and headlights on your hips, everything would be shining forward and not out to the side, okay? We'll get there later. And then draw the tailbone down to take this duck butt out of your back if you can. And then bring the arms to the sky. So you're hugging your biceps towards each other. Shoulders are down once again, hands are active. So try not to have any limpy wrists. Good, and then just breathe here. Feel your feet rooted. Feel yourself lifting through the core. And find your back. Then we're going to take our hands back, clasp our hands together, squeeze, squeeze those shoulder blades, look up, and find a humble warrior. Humble warrior, arms come up and over. Breathe. Good. Take the hands down, take the arms up. And we're going to just take a vinyasa. So this is pretty straightforward. Hands. Plant, take a vinyasa. I'm gonna go through a push-up and down dog. Inhale, left leg rises. A careful step forward to the left thumb, right foot plant, heel to uh, heel to heel or offset even more. And then arms come up, shoulders and hips square to front. Okay. So again, root through the feet, feel the tripod of the feet, big toe mound, little toe mound, inner heel. And then the knee is over the ankle, and then you're going to turn the knee forward or out so you can see the fig and second toe, so not here, right? And then you're going to bring your hands back and switch the grip to the awkward grip. Squeeze your shoulder blades together, look up, open the throat, and exhale, humble warrior. Breathe here. Take your arms up if you can. And then bring your hands down. Take your arms up. And then bring your hands down here. And we're going to come up on the back toes and step forward. And fold. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, fold. Inhale, root to rise. Rise up. Look up. Little back bend here. If you're ready. Then neutralize the spine and bring your hands to your heart. Breathing in. And exhale, hands down to mountain. Okay, moving on to our warrior two sequence. Here we go. Inhale, rise up, look up. Exhale, hanging fold. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, full plank pose. Take your vinyasa. Take your right leg to the sky and take a careful step forward to your right thumb. Plant your back foot. Now, the outside edge of your left foot is going to be parallel to the back of your sticky mat and you're going to cartwheel your arms up to warrior two. 
bending in and out of warrior two. You're gonna land in just right. The wrists are over your ankles. Maybe your femur is parallel to the floor, maybe a little less. Feet are grounded in, and you're gonna ground into the outer edges and the big toe in a slight lift in the inner arches. Let's find our peaceful warrior and open up the side body. Give yourself a few breaths. Find a happy place for your neck. It doesn't really matter as long as you're not straining. Sometimes I like to look up if it feels good to drop my head back. Inhaling and then we're gonna accelerate to extended side angle. So left arm comes over and I'm reaching towards the side of the room and opening up the shoulder a little bit so we're not jumping here. This is here just as a stabilizer. Reach and reach and reach. Okay, now we'll do a little power move that I did the other day that is fun. So we're gonna reach out for the ball and we're gonna engage our core here. We're gonna really ground into the foot in the front and reach and open that shoulder. And then we're gonna come on up to a reverse triangle. So straightening the right leg and the right arm comes up and over. Let me take a few breaths. How are you doing? And I'm gonna inhale up to Prasarita. This is Prasarita. Left finger is in line with the right. Take your left hand back behind your body and reach over your right toes. And then take the right hand down, encouraging the left shoulder open, release the left arm up, retrieve Konasana. Now we talk sometimes in class about finding length in the right side body. This is the side that's down here. So in stress, a lot, instead of a lot of compression, we're gonna actually draw this rib towards this left hip, which opens this up a little bit on the right side. So I'm glad you can see that here because sometimes talking to it in class, people are in a pose and they're not really able to, to watch. So if you can't find that, it's all just to help you. And then we're gonna inhale up to our reverse triangle again and find our warrior two, which gives us a great place to cartwheel down and step back to plank. Take the vinyasa. and get back to down dog, however you like. Now I'm gonna go from the other side. Nick, what do you want me to do? <laughs> Turn around. How about this? That works. Left leg up. Let's get a little step of the left thumb. Plant the right foot, warrior two. Bending in and out. Same rules apply. Relaxing the shoulders down, nice active hands, drift sheets over your left third finger. So lots of core here. Then we're gonna inhale up to our peaceful warrior and take a couple breaths. Happy place for your neck, maybe explore what that is. And then we're gonna inhale, we're gonna find an extended side angle. Reaching, we've got one line of energy from my right third finger to my right heel. One line. Now we're gonna ground into the left foot, left heel, left big toe, and the right foot, and then we're gonna hold that ball because it takes some stabilizing, right? We're gonna breathe, reaching, engaging the legs, feeling it in the left quadricep and the inner thigh for sure. In the next inhale, we're gonna go into more a reverse triangle. Straightening the left leg, opening up left side body. Ah. <laughs> Feels nice. Inhaling up to your prasarita or your straight-legged triangle. Then you're gonna bind your right arm behind you and reach over your left toes. Okay, so we do this first. Then we take our left hand down. You don't, you don't have to bring it to your knee or put any pressure on it. You can bring it to your shin, or you can just hold it outside your left leg and then release the right arm up to the sky. And again, here we go again. So same on one side as the other. This area here, this upper rib cage, is gonna sort of yield to the right hip to give us some space on the left side. Sky mudra. As focus, so we bring our first finger to our thumb, and then we inhale up to find a reverse, 
and our warrior two, and cartwheel down. And then we're gonna step forward and fold. So I was here and I'm gonna go back. <laughs> you guys stay where you are. Ah, so inhale, halfway lift, and exhale, fold. And inhale, root to rise all the way up. Listen carefully. We're gonna exhale, swan dive forward, hinge and fold. Inhale, halfway lift. Now, if you know how to jump float or fly to Chaturanga, you can jump back by bending your knees, planting your palms, and going to there. If not, take it the way you did before with a step back. Then you're gonna find your upward facing dog and your downward facing dog. And now, to rest, you're gonna find child's pose or balasana. Sitting back on your heels and resting your forehead down. So you guys are gonna go there and I'm just gonna talk to you for a minute while you rest for about two minutes. So, what's been coming up for me is sometimes things like cliches are said a million times over and we don't even realize what we're saying. And it happens in every, in every uh, profession. It happens um, when you have a beautiful piece of art on the wall and you pass it all the time and somebody else who hasn't been into your house says, that's exquisite. And you go, it is. So for me, what's coming up is, I don't wanna just give lip service to prayers. I wanna know what I'm saying. So the prayer that I'm um, specifically uh, talking to at this moment is Loka Samasta Suki no Bhavantu. It's in Sanskrit. And what it means is, may all beings everywhere be happy and free. And may the thoughts, words, and actions of my own life in some way add to that happiness and that freedom and the love. And if you mean that, that means that you don't discriminate. May all beings everywhere be happy and free and walk through the world with ease. All beings everywhere. And it also means that I'm gonna be accountable so that I'm part of the solution. And in this situation, in the COVID-19 time, where we are now, there are things you can do to be part of the solution, okay? And it's not a lecture, it's just um, a seed, which I'm sure that everybody has already planted and they are aware of, but if you say that prayer, any prayer, then let's mean that prayer together, okay? All right, let's come back to Balasana. Here we are. Let's find our way to downward facing dog. Let's take our right leg up and take our right foot through. Now let's put our block six feet in front, six feet, no, not six feet, six inches in front of your right pinky toe and cartwheel up to warrior two. There's warrior two. Good. Now I want you to take your right shoulder and bring it underneath your thigh if you can. Now this is the wrapper, right? My right arm is wrapping underneath my right thigh. And then this arm is gonna bend at the elbow and my right hand is gonna reach for my left. And I'm gonna start to straighten and bend right my right leg. So this is a very intense stretch. It's also feels really good when you're really stretched out. Good, then we're gonna find our bind again. And we're going to keep the left hand reaching for the right inner thigh. And we're gonna find our block, okay? So this is gonna open the left shoulder. We're gonna keep our legs low and our hips low. We're gonna walk with our block forward, step the back foot in, keep the right knee bent, 
then start to come into half moon. Then I'm going to straighten my right leg, open my heart, my drishti is right in front of me, and I'm going to take my arm up. Now if you'd like, you can go into Chapasana, which is bending your left knee, reaching back behind you, and kicking in to your hands, which also feels really nice. It opens the shoulder. You can also switch the grip, like we do in Dancer, which opens up the shoulder even more. Good, then we're going to soften the knee and step back. We're going to come up and face forward. Take your arms up to the sky and hinge and fold. <sighs> Come to a halfway lift and fold. Now you're going to reach behind you, grab your feet. You can step on your fingers or you can reach for your calves. And you're going to pull on your ankles and pull the crown of your head towards the mat. And you're, again, you're going to widen your sits bones and breathe. And here, if you have a headstand in your practice, you can bring it in. Both versions are really good for you. The change of the flow of the blood. You always want to err on having a Healthy cervical spine, if you have any kind of rods or screws in your neck, you can't do this. And you should practice on a wall if it's not in your practice. Good, and then you can come down nice and slow, back to your wide-legged forward fold. And you're going to lift your heart and round. heart and then you're going to scan skandasana to the left now here your knee doesn't have to be over your ankle so check out where my toe is versus my ankle come up on your fingertips lift the heart flex the right foot and balance take your hands down and switch skandasana to the right flex dig your left heel in and balance Flat. hands come down Walk your fingers around to the front. Now you do want your right knee over your right ankle. Now you're going to find a twist. Left hand on the inside of the right foot. Twist the arm right arm to the sky. Good. Take the right hand down and find your vinyasa. Now you stay where you are, and I'm just going to turn around for you so you can see me. Left leg rises. Careful step forward. Plant the back heel, cartwheel up to warrior two. Come low. Back your shoulder underneath your thigh. Bend your right elbow. Start to straighten and bend that knee. Good. Release the left arm. Reach for the inner left thigh to open the shoulder here. Good. And then reach down for your block. Step forward and find your half moon. So you should be able to look down your right leg and see your foot. It shouldn't be behind you. Proper alignment here. Then release that top arm and open up your heart. Again, Chapasana, you bend your right knee and kick into your right hand. Opening up your shoulder, looking straight ahead. <sighs> Breathing. Feeling grateful for your body and its strength, no matter where you are, okay? Let yourself be where you are. And release, step way back, come forward. Inhale the arms up, and exhale, hinge and fold. <sighs> Inhale, halfway lift. Take your 
right hand right in front of your face. Square your hips to the earth and inhale the left arm up. If you want a little more, you can reach for the outside of your left ankle. Chin mudra or Dain mudra with the left hand. Dain mudra and chin mudra are the same thing, by the way. Good, come on now. Give yourself a little wide-legged cat-cow. And then go to the other side. Left hand right in front of your face, right arm spirals up for a twist, hips are square to the floor. Right, so the twist comes from the thoracic spine. And again, lots of space from the ear to the shoulder. And you can take this a little deeper if you like. Good, I'm gonna do this. Inhaling. And then you're gonna go to the left. Kandasana and balance. Bring your fingers down into the right and balance. To the other side and balance. We're going to turn around. You'll be facing forward, but I'll be facing back. Right hand to the inside of your left foot. So draw that knee into the midline, hug it in there. And if you bring the left hand down, let's take the right foot to meet the left. So again, I'll be over here. This is where I started. And then I'm going to take a half sun salt. Inhale, halfway lift, exhale through. Inhale, root to rise. Listen carefully, exhale, swan dive forward. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, chaturanga. Inhale, upward facing dog. Exhale, downward facing dog. And child's pose. Ah. Mmm, deliciousness. So breathe there. Another two minutes. Just find something to be grateful for. There is so much. Grateful for your strong, healthy body. Grateful for your breath. Grateful for the roof over your head. Grateful for government assistance. Grateful for healthy children. Grateful for loving parents. Grateful for good friends. Grateful for social media. Grateful for yoga. Grateful for creative ways to connect. Grateful for time and space that we needed. There's a silver lining. So find it, because the more you find it, the more you'll get it, right? Okay, let's come up and find ourselves on our backs. Come on down. Do a little bridge flow. Arms up for head to start. And then when you do bridge, uh, try not to look at the camera um, or look at your screen. I'm going to try to prompt you so you don't turn your head. I want the chin in line with the sternum the whole time just to keep it nice and safe. It's easy. So you're going to inhale and you're going to take your arms down by your sides and lift your hips. And then exhale, you're just going to take the hips down and keep your arms up and over. So flow on your own like that. And just know that when you come into bridge, um, you're not squeezing your glutes. They'll be firm because of the posture itself, but there should be no additional gripping. So just be mindful of that. And then we're gonna come up and hold it. And if you like, you can roll your shoulders underneath your body, squeeze your palms together. And again, keep your chin in line with your sternum. This is a great uh, compression for your throat, for your thyroid, for your metabolism. It's a glandular assist, if you will. Three more breaths. Take the world out. Again, if that peanut gallery comes in, again, it's just Now. So 
press into your feet, relax your hands, and come on down. Good, so now I want you to find um, your knees up, hug your knees in, and then squeeze your nose with your knees around. Good, come on down. Take both legs up. Arms are out like a T. And then just take the left leg down, keep the right leg up. And then you're going to take your hands and clasp them behind your right hamstring and push your hamstring into your hands and flex your right foot. This releases your hamstring. It feels fabulous. And then you can bend your left knee and place your right ankle on top of your left knee and thread the needle. Hands go between your legs, um, either to the top of the knee or underneath the thigh. And you're going to draw the left knee and the left foot in towards your body. And if you have um, healthy knees and it feels good to you to give yourself a more intense stretch, which is not true for everyone for sure, especially with um, tender knees, which is common, you're just going to take the inside of the knee and maybe press away. But be gentle here. This isn't for everyone. This is just an option. A lot of runners have issues with knees, people in sports arthritis, what have you. So just be really, always err on the side of, of gentleness. Good, and then we're gonna actually cross the left leg over the right. Take our hands down, bring your feet down a second, lift your hips three inches to the right, draw your eagle legs in, that's what these are, and then drive them over to the left. That'll encourage your right shoulder down, and then you can take your chin to your right shoulder corner and breathe. So we're, a, we're inviting this to find the floor. We're not, we're not um, forcing it down. We're breathing it and opening it. We know that this is a counter pose, right? So you've got all this happening headed that way. And you've got the opening of the thoracic spine. You've got the opening of the rib cage. You've got the twist. And sometimes this isn't going to just melt to the floor. It's going to take some time to find it. Good. Then we're going to take your chin to neutral and come on up and unwind. Again, legs come up. All right, leg comes down a little forward. Good. Switch the grip to the awkward grip. Clasp your hands behind your hamstring. Flex your left foot. Press into your foot. And again, try not to raise your head, just let it rest. And then you're gonna bend your right knee and place your left ankle on top of your right and again, thread the needle. Drawing the ankle and the knee towards your chest. Chin is tucked. And again, the same modification, the same intensity if you choose to take it, just pressing into the left inner knee or thigh. We have to be very careful with our knees. Take the time to breathe into this. Good, and when you're satisfied, you can cross your right leg with your left. Come on down, press into your feet, lift your hips three inches to the left, and come over to the right for your supine twist. I recently uh, strained my left thigh, my left side. So I'm just gonna go really easy here. And again, I just let myself be where I, where I am. My left shoulder is not reaching the floor. I'm just gonna let it be, okay? And the arm, the weight of my arm is gonna help it. But I'm not gonna force it. And let the sound track be your breath. Okay. 
good, and then take your knees back. Unwind, hug in. Good, bring your feet down. Windshield wiper left to right, left to right, left to right. Draw the knees in. Reach for the outsides of your feet. Find a happy baby. So I'm gonna pull my knees into my armpits and my feet will be flat like I'm walking on the ceiling. Sometimes it feels good to extend one leg as I drop the left heel into the groin area and then switch. I tend to finish the same way because these finishing postures feel good in my body. But if there's a finishing posture that you haven't gotten, take the time now to, to go there. It's your practice, your home, wherever you are. If you need a shoulder stand, if you needed something we didn't get, take it. Take it. I'm just going to take three breaths and see if the body can ask enough. Good, and then when you're ready, bring your knees together. You can extend the legs long. Ankles come together, feet fall open. Palms are up close to the body, and then they relax. Close your eyes and let yourself start to breathe. I'm gonna take you through a body scan, so you stay where you are. And I'll guide you through a little body scan. I'm going to soften your toes and the arches of your feet and the tops of your feet and the soles of your feet and your ankles. I'm going to feel your feet fall heavily into the earth. Dead weight. I'm gonna get, let the, the nice, warm, soothing energy come up from your ankles to your calves and your shins, to the backs of your knees, to the fronts of your knees, up your thighs, behind your th thighs to your hamstrings and up to your groin. And all the way from the ankles to your hips, you're gonna let your legs just soften Breathe into your legs and just exhale any tension there. Let your legs fall heavily into the earth like dead weight. And so your feet and your legs are heavy. Good, and now the warm energy, relaxing energy is gonna find its way up into your butt, into your sex organs, all around your torso, swirling around your inner organs, up your spine, all the way around, around your heart, around your rib cage, back of the back, all the way around the chest to the collarbone and all the way into the neck and all the way up to your chin. Relaxing your shoulder blades, inner organs, breastbone, spine, hips, pelvis, sex organs, glutes, all the way into the earth. Let everything just go. And breathe into that. And relax everything from the neck down into the earth. Dead weight. And now take that warm, swirling, relaxing energy all the way up into the throat, into the neck, into the mouth, into the tongues, lips, gums, all the way around the back of your skull, in and around your face, your ears, your eyebrows, your eyes, the sockets, inside in your brain, in your skull, and your hair. Everything from the crown of your head down to your neck just falls heavily into the earth like dead weight. 
And now everything from the crown of your head all the way to the tippy tippy tips of your toes falls heavily in together. And you're completely relaxed. And you breathe into the whole body. And you release any tiny little ounce of tension out through your nose on the exhale. And let yourself be soft and heavy for three more breaths. start to slowly bring your awareness back to the room. A little subtle movement of the fingers and the toes. Maybe you circle the wrists and the ankles. Maybe you deepen the breath. Bring your awareness back to where you are. Bring your arms over your head. Give yourselves a good stretch. Fingers towards the back wall, toes towards the front. Deep breath in. Open your mouth, side out, arms come down, knees come in. Good and rock from side to side. And as you're ready, bring your body over to one side. I'm just going to come into a fetal position. You're gonna rest your cheek on your bicep like a pillow. And so they say that we never finish a yoga class the same way as we started. There is a shift somewhere, even if we don't know it at the time. But we like to add an extra prompt there because in this space, as you're being reborn, your fetal pose from corpse pose, you can begin again. So we often say as yoga teachers, leave what no longer serves you behind you on your mat, which can sound trite, and yogi ask if you don't know what it means. But to know that you always have choices for how you live your life and what you leave behind you to end your suffering is a really big deal and not tried at all. Actually, it's quite wise. So know what's not working for you and make the choice right now to let it go. And if you come back to it, which you will because we're creatures of habit, you can remember this moment and let it go again. And that's the way change happens. When you're ready, press into your palm, come into a comfortable seat facing me. You can keep your eyes closed and just check in. Did you notice a shift? Do you feel any differently physically, emotionally? Just notice without judgment. And that's what mindfulness is. Mindfulness is paying attention to the present moment as it is without judgment. And that without judgment little piece there makes all the difference, right? Bring your hands together to your hearts. With my sincerest prayer, I say, Loka, Samasta, Suki no Bhavanti. May all beings everywhere, everywhere, be happy and free and walk through the world with ease. And may the thoughts and the words and the actions of my life in some way contribute to that happiness, to that freedom and that ease. Bring your hands together to your heart, bow your chin to your fingertips and thank you so much. It was my great honor guide you through this practice from my heart to yours. Namaste.